Hi folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go through the process of how to etch glasses and bottles using a CO2 laser. Now, for those of you who follow my channel mainly for the kind of traditional glass purposes um, or processes, I will be going back to that. It's just I'm not quite up and running after the flood. So for now, I'm just sort of, you know, biding my time, ticking over, making some videos, doing some sort of digital stuff and laser stuff. But rest assured, I will be back doing those processes soon. Anyway, etching glasses and bottles or anything cylindrical, really, you can do it in the traditional method using a sandblaster and vinyl, but you're going to take a lot of time sort of picking the vinyl. Whereas if you've got a laser, this is another click of a button, quite a skillless thing. But there is a lot of things to consider when you're doing it. So the first thing is the kit that you'll need. So I'm assuming that you've got a CO2 laser already or any other form of laser. And it's this thing here, which is a rotary axis. So what it, the way it works is very similar to a lathe, where you've got your cylindrical object here, your laser is sitting at the top, and then your stepper motor kind of, well, rotates it in the steps so that your laser can sort of go back and forth, um, yeah, etching your design onto the glass. That's the sort of basic overview of it. But there are, like I said, there's a few things to take into consideration. And we'll start with the kind of actual products that you're going to be etching, because it's not as simple as just grabbing any old glass and thinking, I'm going to etch my design all over that. So let's take a look at that stuff now. Right, let's have a look at a few glasses and I'll discuss the limitations around some of the certain shapes you might encounter. So we'll start with the wine glass. And before we look at the glass, I'll just do a brief explanation of how the laser works with a rotary axis. So the laser's got two axes, and I'm ignoring the fact that the bed goes up and down because that's manual control. But the actual thing that the laser is controlling is your horizontal, where it's just going backwards and forwards, and your vertical, where it's going forwards and backwards. Now, when you plug in a rotary axis, the forwards and backwards is the rotation of the glass. So you've got your laser, and that is going backwards and forwards, etching your design, and then this is being rotated as you do it. Now, a laser has a perfect focal length, which means basically the distance that the laser tip is from your surface is where you're going to get your sharpest edge. Now, a glass like this makes that very difficult. Not impossible, because you could do a small section of it if you just wanted to etch a name on it, but you couldn't etch an entire design from, say, you know, there to there, because, you know, you'd have it really, really sharp here. And then as it gradually went up here, that would be blurry to the point it would barely even be recognisable. So wine glasses, doable, but not 100%, you know, covering the whole surface. This is ideal. So if you've got something, a set of glasses or bottles that are perfectly straight, you can get a great result out of these. And we'll talk about the setup of the rotary axis later, but when you set it up properly, you can do it so that this would give a perfect sleeve with, you know, what meets in the middle, a really, really nice uniform pattern, sharp all over, and if you needed it to meet at the back, you could. These are the products I'm gonna be etching later because I want a, um, a new set of bottles behind the bar with my own design on. Then that sort of brings me to the middle ground, which is something that's got a, quite a slight taper on it. So I, I etched this, and I don't know how well that's coming out on camera, but it came out all right. You know, from a distance, you can see what it is. It's a twin lens roller cord. But up the top there, those lines have started to converge. Now you can see how fine the lines are around the middle. That's where I will have set the focal point. But then as it's going up, you know, that they should be three separate lines and they're all blurred together. Not the worst, but it's still not the best. So I think, you know, in cases like this, you probably want to be etching something about that big. Because you've got a bit of leeway either way. It's just when you get too close, you'll get blurred and too far away. Same, but also it gets much weaker. So anyway, that's my brief explanation of that. I hope that makes sense. So let's jump over and have a look at setting up the rotary axis. Right, so this is the rotary axis I've got. There's two different types. Well, there might be more than that, but the two that I've seen is this one, which works like a lathe where you kind of pin 
whatever you're doing in between this, in, in between these two bits. And then there's also one which has got kind of rollers on the bottom. I can see benefits in both. I think, I mean, I, this is the more expensive one. So I'm assuming it's probably more accurate. Um, but I can definitely see the one with the roller being a bit more beneficial in terms of the size because, I mean, as far down as the bed of your laser will go should mean that's how big you can etch something that's cylindrical. Whereas in this case, you really, you know, can go to the stepper motor. Well, I suppose you could build something out, but maximum you're going to get is like, yeah, to wherever these bars are. Anyway, what will come with your rotary axis is this main body here, a chuck, a few different sets of chuck jaws, and a chuck key. You might notice my chuck is really, really rusty, and that's because I don't use it. Two reasons. First, it's a piece of crap. Like, the jaws don't meet evenly, so you just can't grip whatever you put in there in a way that it's not going to sort of wobble up and down. But secondly, I'm working with glass and putting glass in between kind of metal jaws and clamping it together till it's tight isn't a really good idea. So I took the chuck off and yeah, I never use that. So I'll get these bits out of the way. What I will say is I'm, sh I'm sure everyone's laser is going to be slightly different. Where I'm not going to be able to help you is if you get your rotary axis and then you say, oh, the plug's not the same or there's not the area where you plug it in the same as on my one. Sorry, this is, that's something I can't help with. So unfortunately, you'd have to kind of have a, have a word with whoever you got your laser off to see how to wire up your rotary axis and where that sort of plug needs to go. Anyway, I can show you where it goes on mine. Just move this down here. This little white plug in here is what runs the, what is it, Y-axis. So when I, um, so that's what it looks like. It's got a little kind of bit taken out of it so that you can line it up and make sure the pins go in the right holes. It's identical to the one that's on the rotary axis. So I'm just going to plug that in obviously while the laser is off and that's it ready to go now before you turn the laser on a few things you need to remember or main, mainly one thing we need to remember is this works still this is going to go back and forwards this doesn't work anymore so what you don't want to do is put this here turn your laser on and then most lasers will reset by going this way and then going that way and that will just crash into that and it will just crunch and break everything so keep this well out of the way until you've turned your laser on and kind of reset everything right let's get this turned on you see that's just warming up and it's going to go all the way to the right and then hit the limit switch and then when it would ordinarily go up here you can see that the rotary axis is moving. And depending on your model, this will happen differently. Mine goes in quite a sort of mo um, fast motion, like it would if it was going up to the limit switches. And then it does sort of a full rotation and resets. And it's not until this is stopped that you're ready to kind of get your laser in position. One thing that's also worth saying about this is when talk about limit switches, that's really so that when the laser goes from on, on both of its axes, the, the stepper motor is not going to start crunching when it hits the edge. Now, this hasn't got a limit switch, so you'd assume that it would just go on forever when you kind of press something like that. But you'll see there it stops. So it has a limit, and that is what you need to kind of figure out when you set something up. Because what you don't want to do is be about an inch away from the limit set your thing in to, to etch and then it's going to only go so far in one direction so just a little tip i found that out the hard way which is a bit annoying so let's put some stuff in there and i'll sort of show you the things that i've made up to that have assisted me along the way right, let's lower this down so today i'm going to be doing bottles and i mean it's pretty set up for that already because you've got this little end here 
which is perfect for sort of centering on here and then that I'm just going to butt up until it's central and then lock it in place. You need to give it a good bit of pressure because I'm relying on just the force of, of it pushing against here. So I'd lock that in place and then that's it ready to ready to go. Now obviously with something like a glass this becomes problematic then. So you need to have something that's going to butt up against either this or this so that you can etch the glass. So what I've got is just a, a bit of wood that someone gave me. I think it's like a wood turning blank. And then I just, with a hole in the center, I can just put that on here. Get my glass in place and find it's kind of, whoop, just a bit, there we go. Put the pressure on. Right, before I get the bottle set up or anything like that, the first thing I need to do is make sure that the rotary axis runs perfectly in line with the x-axis of the laser. Because, you know, if it's off-center slightly, you're going to have something that etches diagonally across your surface, which you don't want. So what I've done, I've lowered the la sorry, I've raised the laser bed so that these sides of the rotary axis will touch this bit, what the x-axis of the laser is on. And I'm just going to move that sort of into place, making sure that that touches perfectly, completely, you know, flush either side, no gap. And that means you're going to get a perfectly straight line as you're etching along. And then you can, you know, lower your laser bed and then, you know, don't move your rotary axis from that point. Another thing, while I'm lowering that laser bed, I've prepped my bottle and that bottle has got um, vinyl application. I've done a video before about how to engrave photos onto glass and that covers this method as well as how to kind of do test pieces to make sure you're getting the perfect setting for your laser. So I'm not going to go through that in detail in this video but I will put a link to that in the description and also in the top corner of this one here. Thoroughly recommend you watch it. There's, there's a lot of good details in there to get the best out of your laser uh, for when etching on glass. I don't know the scientific explanation of why, but my guess is that with lasers, the way they work is they just put tiny fractures in the glass. And I think because of that, the application tape stops those fractures from spreading. That might be complete rubbish, but you know, when I use the tape and when I don't use the tape, the difference is it's night and day. You know, this makes such a difference of holding detail. So yeah, thoroughly recommend it. All right, so I've got my Design Open in Lightburn, which is a software that I use for all my laser work. And the first thing I need to do is go up to Tools, Rotary Setup. Now, I'd already clicked Enable, but you need to make sure you enable the rotary axis. Equally as important, when you, disable, uh, when you stop using the rotary axis, make sure you disable this because it will give you undesirable results on anything that you're trying to etch that's flat if you've still got it set up to use the rotary. So, these are the settings here that we need to just figure out for, for each individual layer. Now this steps per rotation is a little bit confusing. I thought it would be, it's 360 degrees to get from point A back to point A around a cylindrical object. That's not the case. I think it might be how many steps your stepper motor will take to do 360 degrees. I'd recommend if you've bought a rotary access to contact the people to see what the steps per rotation are because it's not 360 degrees. Mine is set at 76,500 randomly. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you how to know whether you've got it set. So if I leave it on 360, 87 mil is my diameter and that gives me the circumference of that uh, bottle. So with that circumference, 273.3 I'm going to put that into the movement on the y-axis so 273.3 so you see I've just drawn a little black dot underneath the laser on the application tape now if I click this to do one rotation you see set at 360 degrees that doesn't go back to the black dot so let's just put this back to exactly where it was Back to my rotary setup. 
put in the number that I know works for mine, which is 76,500. And now if I do that step, I'm just going to click that. And that goes perfectly back to... So that's something you'll need to set up on your laser because if you don't, you'll end up with a result that's quite elongated and it's, yeah, it looks rubbish. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is the framing is set to centre. I'm going to just rotate my design so that it's sat on the side because the bottle sat sideways. And this is something you have to do, and I don't understand why, but you have to mirror the design and I often make the mistake of not setting this and it just means it's, it's strange it does it backwards so although this is backwards on here that will come out correct on the bottle so I'm now just going to frame it to make sure I'm happy with where that's going to where the design is going to be engraved on the bottle And that looks pretty good to me. So just one final check that I'm happy with the distance. Yeah, that's all good. So I'm going to get my settings, which again, if you watch the other video, that goes through how to find your perfect settings for um, glass. And then just going to go to start. 